Okay, so again, we are um, back into the course. It's week seven, so we're, we're on to metals. Um, also, it's, it's 11.30 right now. I just want to mention anybody who's in the room now and who wants to um, engage a little bit with the high school students, there's a, a, a class coming over to check out the wind turbine. They're doing their own sort of wind turbine project. So we're going to you know, show them some of what we're doing back in the bullpen and see if they can't, if we can't supplement their uh, project a little bit. So I'm going to add my own activity or resource right now. And uh, what I'd like everybody to do, um, when, when we get to the midterm here um, coming up, in fact, let's, let's look at that. Um, I, I'm going to want everybody to do a little bit of their own independent research and see if they can't find um, some kind of material out there that um, you might sort, store, and sell on an international market. And in general, metals are among the most valuable materials. Uh, you know, if you've ever gone down to the Axman or go down to Pacific, you know that your recycling habits are typically supplemented by the metals. So let's just do this. Metals research. Um, uh, this week, I would like, because we've got two, two weeks to cover metals, and this is kind of a, um, I don't know, uh, uh, more of an, uh, an assignment that I would like everybody to dig into. Uh, and it's, it's going to take a couple weeks. Like I said before, I'm not here next week, so we'll just kind of kick things back and forth over the forum while I'm in Washington, D.C. Uh, everyone to do a little bit of independent research on the... Um, exchange rates of metals. Please uh, track your progress. Um, include any uh, correspondence and come up with some prices um, as well as estimates to how much um, money <laughs> in the metal of your choice, Missoula, deposits into the landfill on, a, on an annual basis. So is that clear? And I'll, I'll show you what I I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so there's metals research, and let me just call that. Um, I'll just add a add a forum here. Duplicate it. This is one of my tidier Moodle shells because I'm kind of just building as I go. It's like hard to mess up when there's not a whole lot in it. Uh, okay, so I'll just take that guy, put it down here, actually put it right here. Okay, so getting getting back to this little assignment for this week and next week. Let me, um, let me take you out to one of my favorite websites. Okay, so I, I love, um, love the dynamic periodic table. It shows you all kinds of cool things. One of my, one of my, uh, favorite things to do here. Let me click on properties. And if we're looking at 
temperatures, yeah, so I think we're already here. So what we're looking at are three, three separate colors. And let's just take the temperature way on down. Okay, so we see this, this is the temperature in Kelvin. And if you slide the thing all the way to the, to the left, we're at zero Kelvin. You can tell that every single one of these elements is solid with the exception of helium. Um, helium doesn't form a, a crystal structure, so it's never actually a, a, a solid, even at zero Kelvin. But as we, it's still a liquid. As we raise the temperature, we can see that right off the bat, okay, hydrogen has turned to a gas, neon has turned to a gas. Uh, you've got liquid nitrogen, obviously down here at 74 Celsius, liquid oxygen, liquid fluorine. We'll keep uh, turning, up the, turning up the heat here a little bit. Uh, now you've got a lot of your noble gases have actually turned into gas. Nitrogen, liquid, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, et cetera, are gaseous. That's how we experience them. Chlorine, mercury is kind of wild right down there, a little, little funky in that, at 247 Kelvin. And that's, uh, that's still pretty cold. That's uh, right around freezing. Uh, in fact, well, well, well below liquid water freezing, you've got liquid mercury, uh, which, in fact, is a metal. And, and just by that, it just means that it's got a, a, um, a electron orbital configuration. And let me show you what I mean by that. If we, if we click, I'm just going to click out to that briefly. If we look at the orbitals, I do want to take a look down here. Let's just take a peek at, at Mercury. What website is that? This is the Dynamic Periodic Table, uh, www.ptable.com. And this is this is kind of kind of interesting, kind of wild. But if you look at if you look at Mercury, it looks a lot like those noble gases. All of the all of the shells, 1s all the way up to 6s, 2p up to 5p, 3d up to 5d, 4f, etc. It's um it's full. So it's one of the um it's unique. <laughs> it's unique in that those um, electrons are so, you know, far away from the the nucleus of the mercury atom that they really do behave like uh, valence electrons, like loosely attached electrons that are allowed to flow through the, the overall material. But it's looking a lot like a, a noble gas, and that's why you're seeing it sort of um, dissociates from itself. You know, it's, it's behaving a lot like these other gases. If we, if we pop out, obviously, xenon, all of its orbitals full, radon, orbitals full, krypton, et cetera, et cetera are all full, so Mercury sitting right down here acting a lot like a noble gas, and that's why it's essentially melting at the, at the relatively low temperatures that we saw. Okay, so let's, let's go back here, uh, keep turning up the heat. Keep turning up the heat on the temperatures. Bromine melts. Iodine, another metal melts. Gallium uh, starts melting on up the chain. Uh, I think as we just sort of keep keep winding forward here, we'll see what the the longest holds out. So boron, carbon, vanadium, chromium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, tectinium, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Still, still solid. Still solid, still solid. A few others are starting to melt. Tantalum's holding out. Tungsten, rhenium, osmium, carbon. Uh, until finally, uh, tungsten. And if you remember, if you've ever done any welding, you'll know that a lot of times tungsten is the electrode that's used in very high temperature welding operations. Uh, and then finally, carbon is the last holdout at, um, gosh, almost 4,000 Kelvin. That's diamond. Uh, that's the diamond phase of, of, of carbon, uh, one of the most uh, stable forms of matter. Okay, so let's go back and just sort of see um, uh, 
series. So you know, so typically when um, when we when we think of metals, we're we're thinking of these these transmit um, transition metals uh, right right here in the middle. Um, if we can find iron, um, iron holds a very unique place in the periodic table. It's sort of the, um, the one of the last elements to be formed in the in a um, in fusion reactions. In a, in a star, so you know that as as a um, as a star is is burning, if you will, all the lighter elements are pressed together, form heavier elements, and that's what allows radiation to come out. Iron, you know, once the star starts making iron, it's essentially out of fuel. Uh, it gets to the point where, where where iron's being made, and no more energy comes out. It's sort of at the it's at that special place between fission and fusion. Now. Upstream, obviously, if we go into um, uranium, and it's sort of uh, down here uh, below, also in this sort of you know metals group, um, it will produce energy when it splits apart until it also gets down to iron. Now, so for next week, if somebody wants to grab iron as a commodity and see what it's worth, that's what I'd like you to do. So let's let's go out, um, hop on to, and a lot of times you, you, you're probably aware that you don't get as much for iron as you might for aluminum, but that's what I'd really like to come out of this, this coming week's forum. You know, what's gold worth? What's iron worth? What's copper worth? What, you know, what are these actual metals worth on a, on a purity basis? I know Shelly's been working with gold a lot. Um, but I'd like everyone to just, you know, take some time and, and see what these, what these things are, are worth. So recycling, network. I mean, what they're worth in the country, world, or Missoula? Oh, that's a great question. Now, um, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so the question is what they're, what, they're, what they're worth on a national basis, state basis, regional basis, or global basis. And you're going to have different answers wherever you go. Like, um, yeah, and, and purity. So there, there's no one answer to that. And that's, that's what we're going to see coming out of this discussion. It's really hard to find fixed prices since they're so volatile. Yeah, you, and you won't find a fixed price either. And in fact, I mean, that, and that's really what drives the stock market too. I mean, one stock, the, the, the stock market will always keep moving because different commodities and different things are have different values to different people. So they're, 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 it will never, it will never steady, settle down. There's never, never a steady state. And in my mind, that's what makes it um, interesting. But if you think about, I mean, just people who recycle, you know, scrap. I mean, it's really, when you look, like, say, you know, across the country, and it's like three fifty a pound for copper, and yeah. you're getting here, like, less than $2. Sure. It's really, um, you know, you're like, God, why the hell am I in Montana? Well, okay, so, so you, you, raise, you raise a good point. So what um, the point that Shelley just raised is that you might see copper trading nationally for three three fifty a pound. And then you might go down to the axman like, oh, I'll give you two bucks a pound. Well, there's, there's always a middleman. I mean, they're, 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 if, if you were axman and you had a giant load of copper, you could negotiate the three fifty a pound, four dollars a pound, because more or less what you've done by collecting that in one place, you have increased the value because you've created an artificial scarcity. That's done that's been done through throughout history. Is is you know people with access to large amounts of a material can actually cause a, an artificial scarcity. There's there's no there's no real scarcity uh, of these materials. But if if, if they're sort of collecting it uh, Etc. It becomes less accessible to other other people, and they can uh, sort of negotiate the price. So now, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. So um, they have to stay in, in money. They and they have to sell it for more than they buy it for. That's just fundamental economics. Okay. 
So here's uh, battery recycling, automotive recycling, chemicals and liquids, food and waste, gas, mineral, uh, textile, containers, pallets. There are numerous recycling websites out there. People are posting all the time. I what think. I was just on grn.com, www.grn.com. I'm going to pop out to um, uh, forums, promotions, uh, updates. This is some of the lower prices in Missoula stepping back. We really have no facilities to process the materials and, and all the middlemen. Yeah, there's always a middleman. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I have recite I have um, I have subscribed, and I've I've said many times in this class that there is a market for absolutely everything on planet Earth. And once you start digging into this, you will realize that I'm not lying. <laughs> um, there's rubber. There's nylon. There's uh, what have you. So let's just let's just pop into um, aluminum scrap. Here's the, here's the issue that you're going to run into. Wanted 25,000 kilograms per month of used utensil aluminum scrap, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, in India. Will you, will you be able, uh, in your dorm room, in your uh, apartment room, in Missoula, Montana, to accumulate 25,000 kilograms? No, you won't. Um, might you accumulate enough that you could negotiate with somebody else in the state who could then negotiate with these bigger uh, companies? Maybe, yeah. So, um, so again, there, there's no kind of one um, answer here. But let me, um, let me just click on this one. Let me just click out into this one. Wanted to buy aluminum wire scrap, aluminum auto wheel, aluminum extrusion scrap, lithographic, utensil, UBC. Um, old, how about old mixed uh, scrap? So again, people are buying and trading on this market just like they do on the, on the stock market. Um, available. Um, Nespresso coffee pod scrap. Now, who knows, that, that might be something. I mean, there might, there might be, you know, some set of Baristas here in town that has a bunch. Of, let's just see what they let's just see what they want. This came out um, a couple weeks ago. They need 300 tons a month. They need it. Um, Navashavra rate. Uh, listing ID. Okay. Now, what you can do. And again, what I'd like, you know, as part of your sort of assignment for this week is, you know, spend some time kicking around. And uh, I don't want you to get, get too spammy on this, but what I can do here is just say, you know, enter my email address. To view contact information or reply to this listing, et cetera, I'm going to hit go. Send a reply message. Uh, and so the exchange listing has this unique code with it. And on that code contains you know, what they want, how much, what units they're working in, the frequency, et cetera. Um, and so let's shoot something like, hello, uh, I uh, am um, teaching. Recycling, and be be honest, you know, with with whomever it is, and if, if they don't want to respond to you, it's their prerogative. I'll say, yeah, I got, you, you know, so you don't, you want to build an honest reputation uh, with whomever you're dealing with. I'm teaching recycling technology uh, course this semester, and would like to know if you have any. Um, uh, let's see, what's the right word for it? Um, 
retailers is probably not the word. U.S. suppliers of the uh, scrap you are seeking. And if so, where they're located. Um, we are interested in um, uh, brokering deals with regional uh, recycling firms so that uh, we can gain access to global markets. So better off to say you're an Nigerian prince hoping to send twenty five tons of aluminum. Well, and, and, you know, and we've talked a lot about the economics up to this point, right? We talked about the economics of spending $400,000 uh, for the landfill versus um, it plus $120,000 for our recycling. What we'd like to do is just spend all of the money on recycling and get access to these global markets so that our, our garbage, our our liability becomes an asset, right? All, all the little, I mean, they're looking for funny little coffee make, and I'm, I'm guessing what happens, like in these coffee makers, it was probably some, espresso makers, maker, probably some UL listing where they're looking for one particular alloy that, uh, where the aluminum's not coming off and giving people Alzheimer's disease. I, I don't know if you've heard, but I think um, one issue with, um, scrap aluminum in the environment, it tends to um, get tangled up in some of the finer circuitry in the brain and too much aluminum in your brain will cause you to um, not think so well. So, you know, it could be that, you know, this, this particular metal, there might be some other little alloy in there that prevents the aluminum from getting into the beverage, for example. And that, that could be why they're looking at this one particular um, product. You don't, and you don't know until you ask. And I would recommend sending like maybe 10 or 20 of these messages out because most of them won't respond at all. They're like, well, we don't care. We, we just need to talk to somebody in Houston. We need to talk to somebody in Boston. We need to talk to somebody in Long Beach, Seattle, whatever, that has access to a giant boat and a whole, and a bunch of cranes and a whole bunch of materials. But, uh, you know, Part of turning the corner on recycling in Montana is to figure out what that network looks like, and so that's that's why I'm pursuing this little exercise. So is that is that um, I'm just asking for nods in the classroom. Is it is it clear to everybody what we're kind of doing now with with metals? Because I'll, I'll guarantee you, um, if you got a whole bunch of platinum sitting around, somebody's going to listen to you, uh, and, if, and if you if if you are the recycling technologist who can bring in all of the metals from all of the phones and all of the gadgets, et cetera, et cetera, and sort this stuff out on an atomic basis, you're going to be the next Denny Washington. I, I guarantee you, if, you, if you can suck all of these uh, precious metals, uh, you know, what, what are they called, um, rare earth metals, and, and now you own them instead of they're sort of sitting this nebulous pile over in the landfill, you'll, you'll be the next Denny Washington, I, I guarantee you. That's, that's how he um, made his money, was digging back through all of those tailings, all that nasty copper that was sitting in the pile that the previous technologies couldn't refine. He, he, he bought, the <laughs> bought the waste, reprocessed it, and sque you know, squeezed out some more uh, copper from that, and I'm, and I'm sure a lot of other uh, materials as well. Yeah. Did you click on to see who's offering? Um, or what people want? This guy right here? Yeah. Can you win? Yeah. So what I what I did, um, I went into just a review. I went into Metal World. Which which one was it? This one.
let me let me submit this. Maybe I can go back. Oh, here we go. Contact information. Uh, human powered future. PLLC. That's my company. Bradley Layton. Street address eight. Call. Oh, let's check it out. I even I even do have a home page. This is just my my PLLC, so I'm going to pop that in there. And there we go. Submit the information. Remember, say you saw it on Metal World. So I'm guessing you know most of these bigger companies are paying a subscription fee to allow you know to, to post things. Okay, so they're going to make sure you're not just spamming them and clogging up their servers. They want to know that you're a legitimate uh, person. Okay, so sorry, what what was your question there, uh, Shelley? I'm not sure. I, I think I heard it really okay, that. yeah. So I mean, and, and this. And everybody's going to go off on some different path. I'm not going to constrain you to just go into one particular website. I just was subscribing to um, uh, to some of these bigger uh, compost or not composting recycling networks. And you can see I've got uh, 3,000 messages sitting out. So these things are coming out every you know several times a day. I've just kind of been letting this thing roll for the past uh, few years. Um, so again, uh, go in, into your periodic table. If you're like, hey, I, I would really like to be the tungsten king or queen of Montana or the tantalum, what have you, uh, I'll guarantee you there's a, there's a market for it. Uh, go down, dig in, and then just, just post your results and your findings. So we've got a couple weeks to do that. All right, any question on what we're kind of doing with, uh, with metals for this, for this week? assignment for them and as I, as I said I don't, I don't think everyone was in the room but I, I did go in and reopen uh, this little quiz for and the, you know these these quizzes are not um, they're not hard they're just making sure that you know you paid attention in the lecture and can you know work work through a few little problems the the midterm coming up after we're finished with metals is is more or less just going to be a review of, of some of the questions that we've covered so far in um, in the course I know I've given you a few questions a couple so far from cradle to cradle I put one question in from chapter one I put another one from chapter two so all, all I'm going to do for the midterm on this guy is you know click through and, and ask a couple questions that you can easily find in the, in the cradle to cradle book um, you know by, and so by the time we're done um, you know all the way to the final we'll, we'll have we'll, we'll have covered this book all right any other questions at all it's uh, it's noon we're gonna head to the bullpen yeah did you have a forum for the project section? oh yeah great I, thanks for asking okay so um, and what Jason just reminded me of is um, you know, part of fulfilling the requirements for this course is that you spend 15 hours of lab time, and it doesn't have to be on one particular project. Sean just mentioned that he's he's building a uh, composting uh, turnable bin for his house out of reused materials. So, yeah, let's let's put that up right now. And in fact, um, course forms. Let me. Um, Oh, project updates. Yeah, let's do that right here. Um, forum name. So, uh, project updates. Please post your progress to date on 
your 15 hour um, uh, field work. And, and I know a few people have already posted that, like so working at the hazmat days was one. Um, what I'm thinking I'm going to see from, from Sean is just kind of a, an update on how he's doing with his composting bin, a few figures, a little bit of text. Same thing, you know, Maria and I talked last week about doing the, um, the water catchment with the glass. So just sort of, you know, e each person can just kind of have their own little personal forum where you, you know, posting your, your progress as you go. And just like with any forum, people, you know, look in and say, hey, I like what you're doing. Did you think of this, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just, um, that's what this forum is for. And then by the end of the semester, I'll have one sort of submittable link where you just give me, you know, one Word document or a PDF that said this was this was my 15 hours plus start to finish. So, thanks for the reminder. So yeah, so let's just use that top little space at the beginning of the uh, course for project updates. Sound good? Is that what you need? Okay. Super. All right, well, I'm going to go grab a little, little bite, and then we're going to head out to the, to the bullpen. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you uh, uh, Thursday.